don't think the government, the, our governments have seen a Greek as a very important tool. That's how I see it. For the last 27 years that I've been farming, they've stood here and we've watched all the investments going into farming, the credit and so on, reduced to a minuscule portion of our investments. Aid, 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 yet more aid, at very high price. When you look at it, what is running today in Ghana and in most African countries, really, is dressed up colonialism. <laughs> It began in the early 90s when a glut in Europe saw cheap surplus beef being dumped on West African markets. Poultry soon followed, and the growth in quantity has been exponential ever since. In 2010, the EU, USA and Brazil together exported over 200,000 tons of frozen chicken to Ghana, valued at $200 million. Worse still, imported chicken is being sold at below the cost of local chicken, and farmers here simply can't compete, resulting in the collapse of dozens of farms and the loss of hundreds of jobs. We spoke to importer Nabil Mukazil of Finatrade. We are traders. Whether it's imported or produced locally doesn't really change anything for us, as long as we can buy that product and it gives us a margin. I mean, we don't have a preference uh, for imported products because uh, a locally produced product is much easier to handle because, first of all, you don't have uh, the whole logistic aspect of it. You don't have the, uh, the foreign exchange aspect of it. When you're importing product, you're going to have to find the foreign exchange, send it outside. Uh, locally produced products don't have uh, VAT on them, so that, that, that's a big advantage. Um, so all in all, a locally produced product is definitely much easier to handle um, and better for any business, uh, whether it's us or anybody else. But is it there? At this point in time, no, it's not. And Nabil Mukazil says importers are not to blame. We're easy targets, uh, but the reality is um, the, 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 the poultry industry in Ghana has to, be, has to look at the real problems uh, of why they have not succeeded. Dr. Yao Graham of Third World Network agrees. I'm not interested in the importers because those importers are entrepreneurs. I'll assume that they would find other opportunities in the economy if it's the economy is doing well. Okay, so I'm not interested in importers. I'm interested in the policies which create the opportunities to import poultry as, more impo as, as having some greater weight than the policies which stimulate local production. How is it possible, he asks, that imported chicken can be brought into the country and sold at below local cost. For poultry farmer Ken Kote, the answer is simple. Okay. And like local farmers, foreign farmers are heavily subsidized by their governments. Our developed partners invest about $340 billion a year uh, through subsidies in agriculture. Um, and that's a, a capital base um, that um, it's very difficult to compete with when you're looking at it from the perspective of developed versus underdeveloped or developing uh, countries. They get subsidies for keeping land out of production. They get money for things which are, are in surplus are bought by the, by, the, by the government, okay, and so on and so forth. So once those surpluses are bought, a way has to be found to let them go. In the U.S., for example, I mean, the amount of subsidy given to cotton farmers was more than the export value of all cotton produced in West Africa. Add to this the issue of import duty or tariffs. In Ghana, a mere 20% tax is levied on imported chicken, which makes barely a dent in its landed price. And the final nail in the coffin is the high production cost farmers have to bear. Charles Otu, general manager of First National, picks up the story. If you look at what simple reason have affected all of them, you will say that is the cost of money. Interest rates in Ghana far exceed the international norm. A farmer in the USA, for example, borrows at 4%, while their Ghanaian counterpart pays anything up to 28%. Besides, loans are difficult to get because banks see agriculture as high risk. Basically, say for poultry, you will appreciate the fact that the initial investments 
by the promoter itself is huge because of the land acquisition, what he has to go through with the uh, preparations and the equipment that they even bring in for the processing are specialized equipments. For such huge investments, what kind of collaterals do they have to support those investments? And if you look at also the competition and the fact that the imported ones are much, much cheaper, then you say that even if you support and they are able to produce, the marketing then becomes a problem. So the risk is very high. Risks that don't exist in the exporting countries. They have mechanisms that are laws. And if their poultry prices start falling below a certain price, those mechanisms will kick in to protect their industries. So it's well understood the risks you are taking, and of course, the investment will follow suit. While foreign farmers receive substantial support from their governments, farmers here receive none. As individuals or investors themselves, they put in everything when they bring in the feed, they bring in the um, insecticides or whatever, they pay duties at the port. We don't even give them any tax incentives. And it's, it's a huge problem. Are you in need of credible and relevant business information to make vital decisions? Or do you wish to reach Ghana's up market business and consumer segment with your product and services? Subscribe to and advertise in Business and Financial Times today, Africa's leading source of credible and relevant business information. For enquiries, contact 021-785-3667 or visit www.thebftonline.com. Serious about internet? Serious about speed? Choose a package that suits you. Get your mega data vouchers from iBurst Africa now. Available from only five Ghana cities. Spend more time online with mega data and pay less for serious speed. Mega data vouchers are valid from 1 to 30 days from date of activation. And for vouchers of 35 Ghana cities and higher, unused data can be carried over to the next month if you top up within the 30 day period. You can switch to the Mega Data fixed package deal if you're already an iBurst Africa customer or obtain a modem now at a reduced price and benefit from this incredible offer. Mega Data, the package that suits you. Brought to you exclusively by iBurst Africa. The Mega Data vouchers are available from any of our outlets. Serious speed, serious value. iBurst Africa, serious internet. Sometimes you turn, twist and struggle to find solutions facing your business. But you'll soon find out that life can be a lot more fun if you find the right bank with a passion for solving financial problems. Trust in the trust bank. Join the TTB family today and experience a rare passion for performance, a passion for quality service delivery, and a passion for perfection. TTB, passionate solutions. Count on the trust bank. Despite the importance of agriculture, farmers get very little support from government. Alaji Akate, owner of one of Ghana's biggest poultry farms, recently built a state-of-the-art hatchery. Bringing in infrastructure, such as roads and electricity, added a huge burden to its already high costs. The government should have come in and give us the, the, the light. We had to afford everything ourselves, send the land, send the light to the, the side. So, are you telling us, are you encouraging the, the investors? I don't know, maybe I'm a local investor, that's why nobody minds you. This is related to the dominance of, a, of, 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 of an ideology of economic policy aimed at attracting foreign direct investment, giving that priority to foreign investment to the detriment of locals. The paradox continues. In a country endowed with abundant fertile land, poultry farmers have to import maize, a major component in chicken feed, because there isn't sufficient local supply. And what is available costs the Ghanaian poultry farmer double what it costs his American counterpart because of mechanization. While the average Ghanaian farm yields 10 bags of maize per acre,
The same land in Brazil, for example, yields 36, with obvious cost implications. Brazilian maize costs $170 per ton, local maize over 300 If we want to co compete, I still believe that we should learn from the other places, South Africa, Brazil, they empower their farmers to do maize, soya, rice. We have all this in the country. We can easily do that. What are we doing? Not much, it seems. And first world farmers have the firm upper hand. They are advantaged compared to somebody who faces, you know, price competition aided by subsidies, who faces a situation of effective policy hostility struggling, your margins are non-existent. It becomes a spiral to the bottom. You cannot get those financial returns when you have an imbalance that is unjust. You know, one side is allowed to, you know, do all these sorts of things that support their production systems and one side is not allowed to and told, go out there and, uh, and compete. Um, it's a non-starter. If you have resources, you can make long-term investments, which in the early days absorb your inefficiencies and allow you to improve the efficiency of your enterprise. All the giant enterprises of the world that we know today went through phases that they had a learning curve. Policy allowed them to survive the learning curve. Policy allowed them to make mistakes to take wrong turns in the road, but to get back and progress. In the context we are talking about, policy does not offer people producing for the home market, even the first chance, never mind the second. So what is this policy in which first world farmers are subsidized and Ghanaian farmers are not? In which foreign products are allowed to flood the market and jeopardize local enterprise? Let's start with the International Monetary Fund. The IMF's stated role is simply put to oversee the global financial system and provide support to countries needing financial assistance through loans, debt relief and aid. But there are strings attached. Along with aid comes the IMF's right to interfere in the recipient's economic policy. Given that the IMF is the champion of free markets and trade organization, this means that recipient countries must open their markets to international trade recognize the private sector as the market's driving force and limit state intervention in the economy. Ghana is heavily dependent on aid and has therefore agreed to all of these conditions, hence the low tariffs and lack of subsidies for farmers. Those are the rules, but the farmers aren't buying them. It contradicts the sovereignty of a nation uh, because a nation um, is there to provide opportunity for its people first and foremost mm -hmm. and the rest of the world secondly and hopefully we would do it in such a manner that everyone in the world benefits from it but when you have a system where only one part of the world is going to benefit and the other part is actually going to suffer uh, deeply I, I don't think it will sell no matter how many treaties you get uh, signed mm -hmm. the implementation um, will fail. Let's face it, it's not a fair world, particularly when you are on the receiving end of aid. Despite all the treaties signed and international commitments to free and fair trade, many first world countries haven't lived up to the spirit of their pledges. Their farmers are still subsidized and their markets protected, and they get away with it. Policing global rules of trade between nations is the role of the World Trade Organization. It's a frequently voiced criticism that the WTO is not impartial and has a bias towards rich countries and multinational corporations. Farmer Alaji Akate has an unsurprisingly cynical view of trade aid and the IMF. They will give us money and come and sell their, their products and take that money back. And we remain poorest and poorest every day. We are giving them employment over there. And we are denying our people employment here. They are manufacturing their cars, manufacturing their planes, clothes, shoes, everything, selling it to us. 
and we sit down for them to come and take that Greek that we have inherited from our, our great grandfathers. They are telling us that you, you, you relax. We will give you a food to eat. What do you think about it? And we, are, we, we, we just said that yes, 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 we will relax. Uh, yeah, this is man of God. Uh -huh. We carry the sack. This is the what we do for a living. But we are asking the authorities of the nation to use the money wisely. So All the time. You are there. The tears is going in there. Tears is going in there. We have to one day to take a bold decision for us to be able to move forward. Get your refreshment from the real natural mineral water. Safina, the real natural mineral water. Do you know what these buildings have in common? Tropical cable. Top Papa Preco. Hotel, Ghana's finest. Ghana's economic policy is strongly influenced by the IMF, but not all countries accept this control. Despite punitive threats from the IMF and World Bank, Nigeria banned all importation of poultry and today has a thriving industry with ambitious plans for regional expansion. Ken Korti had this to say. There's a massive sub-regional market that could occupy the poultry industry in the sub-region for years to come with enough business to develop, to scale, competitiveness, and so on and so forth. So when we are taking a position which is counter to many of our sub-regional partners, you have to start asking yourself, are we doing ourselves any serious favor? Because they're, they're benefiting from these actions they're taking, whether it's you know, a medium-term action or they're building up the capital basis of those industries. We wait maybe 10, 15 years later and we say, oh, we've got to do this. We do it, they're miles ahead of us, and that's what's going to happen. Given that we have all these fragmented uh, small countries uh, in West Africa, who together are suffering from the same kinds of effects. How could we, as a region, develop a regional market where the different endowments and capabilities are harnessed so that together we grow and so on, so that our trade with the outside world is more beneficial than undermining as it is now? Nigeria has been able to do it. And uh, Ghana are complaining that there is this, that is that. So, for me, I would say that maybe they don't have that political will that Nigeria has. One can argue that because Nigeria has abundant oil and is therefore left dependent on aid, it had the freedom to make this choice. Perhaps so, but bans aren't the only option. In the regulations of the World Trade Organization, provision is made to protect developing nations. If a specific domestic industry is threatened by increased imports, that country may legally raise its tariffs and restrict imports for a certain period. Armed with this information, the Poultry Farmers Association petitioned government in 2003 to raise import tariffs from its current 20%. We wanted a staged tariff reduction.
from the peak of 100% over a certain number of years. I think we worked it over a 10 year period, which would give us the space to build up our industries, develop them to a level where hopefully we would be um, at par uh, in terms of competitiveness, price-wise, certainly. It was done by effective advocacy to the legislature, and of course then with the support of the, 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 the executive at that time, and it was passed as a law of our land. Good step, but the tariff was never applied because they gave in to pressure from the International Monetary Fund, who claimed that it was not in the interest of the poor to raise tariffs so that the price of poultry will be high. So using a kind of a, a cynical anti-poverty argument, but they were basically making a free trade argument dressed up as a, a kind of a, a, a defense of the poor because the IMF has never had the poor as their primary, as his primary concern. You know, put pressure on the government and they never applied the, the tariff, which actually was a terrible act because the decision of a sovereign parliament can be put under pressure by the IMF. But that also tells you the extent to which our governments are more afraid of their creditors than sensitive to the interests of their citizens. Ghana now has oil of its own, which by rights should soon free the country from the shackles of aid and the dictates of the IMF. But Yao Graham has his doubts. Our elite, their outlook about what this country needs is too subordinate to other people's vision. Whether it's the MPP, it's the NDC, or it's the CPP, they're all exactly the same. The Ghanaian elite loved to be praised by the West. They love it when Obama comes and says, you are the model to the world. They love it when Tony Blair or some such character comes around and says, you know, you are the model. You know, you are the fastest, you know, quickest reforming. You are number five in the world. You are going to become number two and so on. There's no qualitative evaluation. For the last 27 years that I've been farming, they've stood here and we've watched all the investments going into farming, the credit and so on, reduced to a minuscule portion of our investments. With one policy after the other, every single year. You have to sit down and say to yourself, I mean, what exactly are they saying? They seem to be speaking out of both sides of their mouths. They haven't implemented any policies that would make it um, encourage people to invest in agriculture. And you can see no serious, so far as I'm concerned, no serious effort to tackle the livestock and uh, poultry sector. What you hear is a lot of promises. You can take every single budget that has been read in the last five years, I can guarantee you the poultry industry's name is in there. To great elation by many, basically thinking, oh, this year they're going to do it, and every single year they do nothing about it. And sometimes they just basically repeat what they had promised to do six years or five years ago. Um, well, you can get away with it for a certain time, as the old uh, adage, you can fool uh, some of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. And I think politicians are going to have to start realizing that very soon, their utterances are going to so destroy their credibility. When they finally do come up with a plan, they may not get anyone who has any confidence or trust in them to support their programs. Alaji Akate has the final word. We need the government cooperation. And if they want to do something for a Greek, they should sit down with the, the farmers. They can just decide everything and dump it on us. It will be better for all of us, for the country, to stop importing everything. I strongly believe that the farmers have sacrificed for this country for a long time, and they are continuing to sacrifice for this country, and nobody is recognizing these farmers. That's why the, the, the young ones, do educated ones don't want to go there. It will come to the time that 
if we didn't sit down we should, and, and do something about this, it will come to a time there will be no, no local farmers. And we will import everything, including plantain, cassava, and come and eat it. You see what will happen. The country will collapse.